Pediatric sleep apnea is uh, prevalent in children um, more than expected. Um, in general, about four to uh, six percent of all children snore, and two to two, three percent of children who snore have obstructive sleep apnea. And I think what is really important um, is most children that have obstructive sleep apnea, beside snoring and having breathing issues at night, they also suffer from consequences that are associated with obstructive sleep apnea, including um, bedwetting, uh, behavioral issues, neurocognitive or school performance that is affected. And in other levels, uh, there are children with um, end organ morbidities, such as cardiovascular issues, such as hypertension. The consequences of obstructive sleep apnea are very important. Um, most children may not show the immediate consequences, but in general, um, majority of children with obstructive sleep apnea have either neurocognitive, cardiovascular, or um, uh, school performance issues and behavioral issues. Some children wrongfully are labeled as ADHD, and they are actually suffering from the consequences of OSA, because if you think about it, these are the children that over the night they don't sleep well, their night is interrupted by multiple arousals and the breathing problems, and when they are during the day supposed to perform in school, they're actually sleepy and tired. These children, um, if they are treated, they actually um, might have benefit and show uh, improvement in their school performances. A, a study many years ago has shown that children who have obstructive sleep apnea and if they are treated well and the treatment is successful, they have improvement in their grades at school. Both obesity and obstructive sleep apnea are very frequent conditions right now, unfortunately, in the pediatric population that we see in the clinics. Um, almost half of the children, 50% of the children that are having obstructive sleep apnea are obese or overweight. Obesity is unfortunately a problem of this generation. Children are less active, eating more cafeteria food and uh, spending more time looking at screens and TV instead of playing outside. Um, obese children are more likely to um, have higher apnea hypopnea indexes uh, which is the um, marker of severity of the obstructive sleep apnea and post-surgery, which is the adenotonsillectomy and the treatment, the current treatment for obstructive sleep apnea, they are more likely to have less uh, um, favorable results. So as a general pit, I would recommend that always ask about the child's sleep routine, how many hours of sleep uh, the child is getting, um, ask if they are energetic and non-sleepy during the day. Um, there are multiple um, ways of assessing the child's sleepiness during the day, uh, including the airport sleepiness scale and parent questionnaires. Um, in general, pediatricians should uh, pay attention to the child's sleep the quality, quantity of a sleep, and if they are um, facing a patient that has behavioral issues, maybe larger tonsils or a story of a sleep apnea in the family, um, children that are obese or have allergy or asthma, and children that have multiple um, ear tubes, ear infections, and sore throats a year, they are the ones who should um, alar alert the physician to start thinking about maybe there is an under, um, underlying sleep disorder breathing going on. And any child that will snore definitely should be uh, referred to a sleep specialist.